Today we're going to be talking about the artist Bridget Riley. She is an English painter. She's one of the best known names in op art and art movement, which uses optical illusions, wavy lines, and black and white. She was born in London in 1931. We are specifically going to be looking at this piece that uses converging or meeting wavy lines to create an optical illusion of our own. Hello everyone. Today we are going to be creating our own optical illusions um, in the style of British artist Bridget Riley. Um, I've talked about her at the beginning of the video, but we are going to be using repeating lines like she uses in her work to create our optical illusion. We're also going to be using different values, so fading, shading, to create our work. This is the specific work that we are using to inspire our own optical illusion. So these are all lines that are converging to one corner. So they're meeting up. They're wider on the bottom and thinner on the top. That's what makes it look like they're moving towards that point. So for ours, you are going to be choosing a line that you want to use. So I have some different types of lines here. Straight, bumpy, loops, swirls, zigzags, ocean waves, regular waves, fast small waves, um, curved. So loops and swirls probably won't work the best because they are not long. They can't keep going. So um, a straight line, a bumpy line, zigzag, wavy, ocean waves, any line that continues, a continuous line where you're not picking up your pencil. Those are going to be the lines that we can use. So to start off, you're going to need actually two pieces of paper. Thicker paper works better. So I'm using cardstock. Um, even if you only have one piece of thicker paper, um, one of them it would be great if it was thicker. But if you only have computer paper, that's fine. Um, the first thing that we're gonna be doing, and here are some examples that are finished, is we're gonna be making a square. It doesn't have to be a square. It could be some other shape, a circle. A geometric shape would be great, but any shape would be fine. I'm gonna use a square. So I'm gonna show you how to make a smaller square than your paper. I'm sure you you probably know how to take the corner and fold it over to make a square, but if we did that, it would not be able to um, fit on the paper because it would be too big. So obviously on this one I used wavy lines, and this one I used zigzag lines. So be thinking about the lines that you want to use. You're going to take one paper and set it to the side. That's the one we're going to draw on. It's okay if that one is a computer paper. Um, so I'm going to take my thicker paper and I'm going to pretend that I'm trying to make it into a normal square where I would line it up on the edge. But I'm not going to quite line it up on the edge. I'm gonna bring it back some. But I'm gonna make sure this is even right here, this little gap. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it closer to the camera so you can see I made a triangle. Okay, and I left this little bit here. So, you take my scissors, and if you wanted it to be smaller, you could even trim it more. I'm just gonna see what size this is, if I'm happy with it. I'm gonna cut this. It's very important that you keep this square. This square is gonna be where we draw our line um, that will repeat, okay? So I have my square cut out, and I have my other piece of paper. I'm gonna see if it fits, and it does, okay? Apologize, you can see my tripod here. My regular one just broke. So I am going to trace this square onto my piece of paper. So I can do it diagonal, I can move it around. I just wanna make sure I can see the whole square. So I'm gonna take a pencil. And this is where it's important that it's kind of a thicker piece of paper or even like a cereal box or something that is a little bit thicker would work. 
but construction paper, card stock, anything thick like that. So I've traced my square onto my paper. Now I need to think about what line I want to use to repeat over and over again. I am going to use a wavy line like Bridget Riley used in this work here and like I used here to make my kind of slime glue turning into slime optical illusion. So what I'm going to do is on my square, I'm going to draw my line from this corner to this corner, okay? Because all of my lines are going to be going diagonal like that. So whenever I draw it, I'm going to make it a little bit more wavy towards the top and then kind of less wavy towards the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm starting at the corner, the very corner, making kind of fast waves and they get bigger and I go to the corner. So that's my line. It's not too complicated because I'm going to be doing this line several times. So I'm going to cut this out. And it's important that you, if you make a mistake, you just keep going. You don't go back and trim it because it's going to fit together like a puzzle. All right, so I go all the way to the corner. So I didn't cut it exactly right. You can see they're kind of a, you know, I cut off the line a little and that's okay. But they still fit together perfectly. And I'm going to go ahead and label this one with a T that stands for top and a B that stands for bottom. And that way I know where they go. So I'm going to move my top one out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is line this up just like a little puzzle piece. So I've got it lined up. I'm going to start in the corner and very carefully I'm just going to trace this line corner to corner. Okay, so I have that line going across. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the very point of my tracer right in the corner and I'm just moving it out a little bit. So it's lined up right in the corner. And I'm tracing it to the edge of the square. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing that. So I might speed up this part just so you're not watching me trace. Now when I hit the edge of the square, I stop for now. Okay, um, whenever we get to our final one, we might go outside of the box a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to stop when I hit the edge because I haven't decided what this is going to be yet. So it keeps going outside of the box. That's okay. I'm just going to trace the part that's in the box. So that side's done. Now I'm done with the bottom tracer. So I'm going to get the top tracer now. And I'm going to line that one up and do the same thing on the top. Now, whatever line that you choose is gonna be related to whatever little image that you draw at the top. So something that you like, like you might draw some sort of boxy looking line and you might like Minecraft. My daughter likes Minecraft. Um, I did a Pikachu example. My daughter loves Pikachu, so I did that with the zigzag for lightning. I think I might make this into some sort of ocean. So I'm just going to trace that little bit. So now I have my wavy lines. Okay. So at the top, I might draw like a palm tree or something related to the ocean now that I'm thinking about it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some of my lines come out of the box, just these two along the edge. Okay, so I'm going to have my two lines along the edge come out of the box. So that's going to be this one here. So I'm going to come out and see, you can see where I erased. I just want a couple of lines to come out. So I just erased that little bit and I'm going to have that little bit come out of the box. And then I'm going to come down here at the bottom, maybe hard to see. So I went down, I followed this line that I'm going to have come out of my box. Okay. And I just 
drew it out. So this is creating the illusion that these lines are 3D. So once I add my shadows later, it'll look like maybe water is coming out. So I skipped one. You can see I'm doing every other one. So I did this line that's coming down, this one. I'm gonna skip this one and come to this one. This will be the last line that's coming outside of my box. Okay, so then I'm erasing the part of the box where my water is splashing out. This may be the hardest part and it may take you a couple of tries I've obviously made a couple of examples of these, so have a little bit of practice. And it's always okay if you if you do this and you're kind of unhappy with it or you change your mind to just turn it over onto the back. I'm kind of unhappy with this, so I'm going to erase some more and just make that a little bit bigger. So you can see now I have three lines kind of coming off. This one would technically come off too because I'm going every other line's coming off. So I might have this one come out just a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some curved lines across okay and that's where my line looks like it's changing direction so right here if you can see it's a little bit easier to see on the zigzag where the line changes direction so here where it goes boop, 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 there's a line going across this is what's gonna make it look 3d okay so here's my wavy one here's my wavy one so you can see kind of it's going off to the left and then the right and then the left and then the right. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of in the middle of the curve, I'm going to draw a line. So I can see it's changing directions here. So I draw a line. It's changing directions here. Actually, I think I've changed my mind about this one going off. Let me keep that inside the box. So it's changing directions here. So I'm gonna draw a line here. Okay, and then it's coming back. Coming back around. Right there. So I have my lines where it's kind of waving back and forth. And right here, my line goes off the box a little bit, so I'm gonna change that. It's totally okay to erase stuff while you're working here. All right, so this is what it looks like right now. I am going to trace this with marker and I'm also going to draw my little water related image. So here I have my traced image and anywhere that I can see my pencil marks, um, I'm just going to go ahead and erase. It would be better if I had a big eraser, but I don't have one on me, just my pencil eraser. So if you have one of those big pink erasers, then it's great. All right. Next, I'm going to move on to coloring and to help with the illusion um, in between the parts that are coming off of the paper. Okay, so this is an ocean wave that's coming off. So this is going to be like a waterfall sort of thing. Um, this one will be blue and this one will be blue. So I'm going to start with that the ones coming off of the paper, just to make sure that I get my pattern right. I'm gonna use markers, but colored pencils or crayons or paint or anything like that works great. I'm using markers because they're a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna get two different colors of blue. 
that I can find if I can. I've got two different color blues. This is gonna make my sort of checkerboard pattern. You can see here on this Pikachu one, it goes like yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, orange, yellow. So I'm just gonna start at the top and I might fast forward through the coloring part. Um, it's just important to keep track of which one you're doing because you're making a checkerboard. Okay, so now I've done the water, the parts that are coming off, and I'm going to be doing the black and white. So I'm only gonna be coloring the black because we're actually gonna be adding shadows in the white part that will really make the water look like it's popping off of the page. That really makes the optical illusion part. So beside all of the dark blues, those are the pieces that are gonna be black. So whenever I was doing my examples, I tried to put just a darker color with the black. So it almost looks like a shadow of the color. And then the lighter color is on the white. So it almost looks like steps in this one, just kind of stepping down or even like pouring down over the steps. So I'm gonna do the black beside the blue part. So I'll go ahead and show you that. And then I'm gonna do some shading just to show you. So I'm doing black beside the dark blue. Um, and then in the whites, I'm going to show you how to shade that shadow. Now, you could use the color, so I could use a colored pencil if I wanted, like a blue colored pencil to add a bluish kind of shadow, but I'm just going to use a regular pencil to just add a normal gray shadow. So you can see I did the black there. So that's the black going across. It may be hard to see the difference between the black and the blue in the camera, but I'm just gonna hold that up for you. Now I'm gonna take my pencil. I actually have a more sharpened pencil. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna follow the curve. And I'm just coloring right beside that line. And I'm gonna pick up the paper so you can see what I did. So let me see if you can see. Right there I colored some with my pencil. And I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna smudge it. Okay, so that's gonna add just a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna, you can go back and fade it a little bit. So it's not such a jarring value change from dark to light. Just kind of smudge. That's a fun way to get silver fingers, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that in all of the areas and I'm gonna color my palm tree and I'm gonna finish and then review the steps with you. So here I have my completed ocean water optical illusion example. So it kind of looks like these waves are popping up off of the paper and just running off. So I'm gonna remind you of the steps. Hopefully you've watched this and you haven't started, <laughs> um, but you will get your white paper and hopefully a thicker paper or a piece of like a cereal box or even like a magazine cover, card stock construction paper, a thicker piece of paper because you're gonna be tracing it and you fold it to make it a square and you leave a little bit of extra on the side. Um, it doesn't have to be a square, it could be a diamond, it could be a circle, it could be some other shape if you want it to be. That's just gonna be the frame for your lines, okay? And it is a little bit easier to find a corner, obviously in a square. So what you do then is you cut out your square, 
and you trace it onto your white paper. And after you do that, you choose a type of line. What type of line um, represents what you're trying to make? Are you trying to make like a rainbow and you're gonna do curved lines? Are you trying to make clouds and you're gonna do a bumpy line? If you wanted to do some sort of, I'll show you like Minecraft, would you do a line like you see on a castle that looks like blocky? Okay, so choose some type of line that represents whatever image you're trying to go for. And you're gonna draw that line on the square that you cut out from one corner to the other. I label mine with T and B for top and bottom because along the bottom, I'm going to trace and just move it going off the square. And then I start back and I take my top one, tracing the line up, okay? Then you figure out which ones are gonna go off of your shape, off of your square, off of your circle. And you kind of erase parts of the square to do that. And we make our curved lines. And I am gonna make a handout um, that does have the steps. So if you are one of my students, you will have the handout, or if your teacher has downloaded the handout, then you'll have that too, um, if you're not one of my students. So we make the curved lines across to kind of make that checkerboard pattern anywhere the line moves over, okay? And then we're tracing with Sharpie or black marker and coloring, so the in between the parts that come out we're doing the black and white checkerboard and the white is really where it pops out that's really where you add your shading to create that optical illusion so hopefully you can think of something that you enjoy um so here obviously i've got the beach slime pikachu my daughter loves pikachu but you may like something else um, so think about something that you enjoy and even if you can't think of a line that represents that thing, you can just choose a line that you want to draw um, to create your optical illusion. So I hope that you enjoy this project. It's definitely a challenging one. I don't want to call it hard because that sounds negative. It will definitely challenge you. Um, to try something outside of the box, and I hope you enjoy.